the joys of holding a newborn baby know no bounds. The birth of a baby is an intricate and complex process that begins when the zygote undergoes cleavage and develops into a blastocyst. A hollow ball consisting of a trophoblast, an inner cell mass and a cavity called blastocele. As the trophoblast grows outwards and penetrates the endometrial lining of the uterus, the blastocyst, with a developing embryo, gets implanted in the uterus and pregnancy is initiated. After implantation, the trophoblast grows further, which causes the blastocyst to sink in and get covered by the cells of the uterus. As the blastocyst sinks further into the uterus, finger-like projections called chorionic villi start appearing on the trophoblast. As the chorionic villi grow further, they interlock with uterine tissues to form the placenta, a structural and functional unit between the developing embryo and maternal body. Interestingly, when the placenta begins to form, the inner cell mass moves downwards and differentiates to form an embryonic disc consisting of three germ layers, the outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm and inner endoderm. The term germ layer indicates that each of the layers gives rise to tissues. The ectoderm, for instance, gives rise to the nervous system and the skin, whereas the mesoderm develops into muscles and organs such as the heart and kidneys, while the endoderm gives rise to the entire digestive system. Did you know that apart from the three germ layers, the embryonic disc also contains certain cells called stem cells, which have the ability to give rise to all the tissues and organs present in the human body? As the embryonic disc grows, the cells of one side of the disc grow faster than those on the other side. This causes the disc to roll and form a cylindrical embryo. Initially, this embryo is attached to the placenta, but as it starts to develop, it moves away from the placenta and remains connected to it via an umbilical cord. The placenta is an important structure that supplies the embryo with oxygen, nutrients and hormones, as well as carries waste products from the embryo back to the mother. The embryo stays inside the uterus for nine months, which is called the gestation period. During this period, the embryo undergoes several developments. By the end of the first month, the embryo develops a heart, while the end of the second month marks the transition of an embryo to a fetus with developing fetal limbs and digits. And by the end of the third month, most of the organs are already formed. Another four months and the fetus is rapidly gaining weight and its bones get stronger. By the beginning of the ninth month, the fetus is fully developed and assumes the position it will take during delivery. Interestingly, while the fetus is undergoing several developmental changes, the mother's body too is undergoing several hormonal changes. The ovary, for example, starts secreting a hormone called relaxin. Likewise, the placenta starts secreting hormones such as human chorionic gonadotropin or HCG and human placental lactogen or HPL. Incidentally, HCG, HPL 
and relaxin are secreted only when a woman is pregnant. Apart from the secretion of these hormones, the levels of other hormones such as estrogen, progestogen, cortisol, prolactin and thyroxine also rise rapidly in a pregnant woman's body. These hormones support the growth of the fetus as well as maintain the pregnancy. Increased levels of progestogen and estrogen, for instance, put the menstrual cycle on hold and prevent the shedding of the uterine lining which is embedded with the developing fetus. Hormonal changes also cause the cells of the mother's mammary glands to differentiate, resulting in these glands producing milk by a process called lactation towards the end of pregnancy. Did you know that at the end of the gestation period, the fetus as well as the placenta starts secreting hormones that set in motion mild uterine contractions called the fetal ejection reflex? These contractions in turn act on the mother's pituitary gland that now starts secreting. Oxytocin, a hormone that causes stronger uterine contractions. The simultaneous uterine contractions and oxytocin release makes the contractions stronger with every passing minute and ultimately results in the expulsion of the baby from the mother's uterus. This process of delivery of the fetus is called parturition. Immediately after the birth of the baby, the placenta is expelled from the uterus. Soon after birth, the baby needs to be breastfed by the mother as early as possible. This is because immediately after parturition, the mammary glands start secreting colostrum, a form of milk that is rich in antibodies and improves the immune system of the baby. Every baby thus begins its journey as a zygote which develops into a fetus over nine months.